And uh, so I, uh, he wanted to know what it, uh, he would need to do to be baptized. And so I shared a paragraph from uh, an old track. It was uh, the angel message. And I imagine most of you have read that. But this particular paragraph was, was written by uh, Apostle Paul Hansen, and I'd like to share that with you. Citizenship comes in an earthly government by obedience to the law of the government and recognizing its authority. The same is true of obeying the law and recognizing the authority of the kingdom of heaven. All governments have authorized officers. Jesus said to his ministry, as my father has sent me, even so I send you. By baptism, one gains citizenship in the government of God. We are here this morning because we recognize God's authority and the laws he has in his kingdom. There is a thing called sin and sin cannot abide in the presence of God. We recognize the importance of a remission of sins. We received a remission of sins when we were baptized. And likewise, we have the opportunity to receive a remission of sins today as we reaffirm that covenant and come with repentant hearts. And I believe everyone here knows that there is no remission of sins by the merely partaking of the emblems, but it is through the repentance that accompanies it. We seek his kingdom because we know he is good. He has that perfect way of life. As members of Christ Church, we have been the recipients of his tender mercy. He has forgiven us of sins. We have felt his patience. We have felt his compassion and friendship. We have received wisdom and knowledge. He hears our prayers and knows our hearts. He stands ready to help us, even before we ask. Is there anyone here who does not seek the companionship of God? Jesus was sent to save us from our sins. He was not sent to save us in our sins. There is no sin too great that he can't forgive save the unpardonable sin, denying the Holy Ghost after having received it. The Lord's mercy is extended toward us in great proportions. Remember the words of Isaiah to Judah and Jerusalem when they had forsaken the Lord. It's in the first chapter of Isaiah. Your new moons and your appointed feast my soul hateth, they are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear, bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash ye, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your hearts be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And then later in the book of Isaiah, he prophesies of the restoration of the house of Israel. 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of my hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Indeed, Isaiah prophesied of a book that would come forth in the latter days, and we know that to be the Book of Mormon. <clears throat> and we are privileged to be a part of the Lord's great and marvelous work, a work that is full of mercy, the mercy of God. Another story that exemplifies the great mercy of our Lord is the story of the woman taken in adultery. Jesus was teaching in the temple and the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman and set her in the midst of the people. Then they said to the master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? And this they said, tempting Jesus, that they might accuse him. And you know the story. Je Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he didn't hear them. And when they continued asking him, asking him, he stood up and said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And then he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst of the temple. When Jesus stood up and saw none of her accusers, and the woman standing, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And the woman glorified God from that hour and believed on his name. Go and sin no more. He saved her from her sin, not in her sin. There is no sin too great that we can't take to the Lord. <clears throat> I remember a time after I had graduated high school and was about to go off to college. I was riding in the truck with my dad. He said, son, I just want you to remember that there is no problem that you might run into that we can't work out together. And that is the spirit that our Lord <laughs> has for each, of, each one of us. We are assembled here this morning to partake of the bread and the wine at the Lord's table, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. This is not a common meal, but rather a special memorial meal. The portions are small, but sufficient unto their purpose. We partake of this meal in remembrance of the sacrifice, the suffering, the broken body and spilled blood of our Lord, <clears throat> and remembrance of the covenant we have made with him to keep his commandments, a remembrance that we have taken his name upon us and been adopted into his family. A morsel of bread is to cause us to remember that Jesus was sent in the flesh and walked among us as was promised in the scriptures. He came to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. 
He established his church and sought for us to follow him and keep his commandments, that his kingdom might be established on earth. Jesus is the bread of life, and he that cometh to him shall never hunger, and he that believeth on him shall never thirst. The small cup of wine is to remind us that without this sacrifice, without him intervening in our behalf, we had no hope of eternal life. We partake of the small cup of wine in remembrance of his blood of the New Testament, the blood of the new covenant in Christ, the blood which was shed for as many as would believe on his name for the remission of their sins. Jesus atones for the sins of all mankind. It was the innocent blood of the Son of God that was spilt by mankind. He paid the price for the sins of all mankind. And man became subject unto Christ. That which was sinful crucified him who was innocent. Mankind became indebted to Jesus all power is given to him to take away our sins. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. We enter into this covenant with Christ through baptism. It's an outward ordinance where we show that we are willing to take upon us his name, that we are willing to keep his commandments, and that we want to be citizens in his kingdom. If a covenant was not necessary, then why would our Heavenly Father have sent his only begotten Son to be crucified? Mercy cannot rob justice. The covenant is required and as such, we are close communionists. These emblems, the bread and the wine, are not to be taken lightly. Josh spoke of that early in our prayer service this morning. They are not to be taken lightly, else it becomes a mockery before God. When we partake of this special memorial meal, let us examine ourselves and so eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Evan Fry shared these words in his book, The Restoration Faith. We believe that the communion is a sacrament, a solemn memorial of a sacred and binding covenant which has been administered by one having authority to commit God. And because it is a sacrament, the communion itself must be administered by one having priesthood authority in the church. Consequently, although we have the most friendly feeling for people of other denominations, we do not take communion with them because we do not recognize their authority to administer it. Although any person, regardless of religious belief, is welcome to worship with us at any of our meetings, including the communion service, we do not invite those who are not members of our church to partake with us, because for them to partake of the emblems without having made covenant with Christ through the ordinances of baptism and laying on of hands, authoritatively administered by his priesthood, would be to eat and drink unworthily, not discerning the Lord's body. In ancient America, Jesus showed us how this sacrament meal was to be administered. It's so precious. It's uh, beautiful that we have that in the Book of Mormon. And while they were gone for bread and wine, he commanded the multitude that they should sit themselves down upon the earth. And when the disciples had come with bread and wine, he took of the bread and break and blessed it. And he gave unto the disciples and commanded that they should eat. And when they had eaten and were filled, 
he commanded that they should give unto the multitude. And when the multitude had eaten and were filled, he said unto the disciples, Behold, there shall one be ordained among you, and to him will I give power, that he shall break bread and bless it, and give it unto the people of my church, unto all those who shall believe and be baptized in my name. And this shall ye always observe to do, even as I have done, even as I have broken bread and blessed it and gave it unto you. And this shall ye do in remembrance of my body, which I have shown unto you. And it shall be a testimony unto the Father that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. And it came to pass that when he had said these words, he commanded his disciples that they should take of the wine of the cup and drink of it, and that they should also give unto the multitude that they might drink of it. And it came to pass that they did so and did drink of it and were filled. And they gave unto the multitude and they did drink and they were filled. And when the disciples had done this, Jesus said unto them, Blessed are ye for this thing which ye have done, for this is fulfilling my commandments, and this, this doth witness unto the Father, that ye are willing to do that which I have commanded you. And this shall ye always do unto those who repent and are baptized in my name. And ye shall do it in remembrance of my blood, which I have shed for you, that ye may witness unto the Father that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. We are so blessed to have that account in our scriptures. So what changes will you make toward God as we begin 2023? Will you be obedient to the financial law? Will you be diligent in studying his scriptures? Will you meet with him in prayer regularly? Will you be more valiant in your testimony? Will you be more virtuous? May we remember the bright hope that is ours the hope of eternal life because of Jesus. May we always re remember the example that he set before us, his faithfulness, his obedience, his goodwill toward others, and his forgiveness. May we remember the love he has for each of us, wanting that none be lost, May we remember the importance of prayer in his life. May we remember that he is always true. Let us resolve today that we will make better decisions, decisions that will honor our Lord. Let us resolve to always choose righteousness Let us choose to submit our will to his will. Let us decide today that we will be more diligent in seeking him in prayer and trusting in his wisdom. And let us never offend his spirit that seeks room in our hearts. Let us love one another as God has loved us.
the prayer of blessing is read upon the bread by Elder Kenneth Byrd. Let us all kneel facing the emblems as much as possible. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
Once more, while the prayer of blessing is read upon the wine by Elder Kevin C. Falk, let us kneel facing the emblems.
This morning in our prayer service, Brother Dan, being a bishop, brought a very good message to us. He brought some words to us to kind of get me interested in the day somewhat, starting off at our worship preparation this morning. And uh, I gave a lot of thought to our commandments that we've been given to be good stewards, recognizing that not anything that is belongs to us. Everything belongs to Jesus Christ. It was created through him and for him. So all things belong to him, even our monies, our talents, even ourselves, even our children does not belong to us. They belong to him. We're caretakers for all things. We're caretakers for our children. We're caretakers for our homes. All the possessions that we have had, we have in our care, we are to be good stewards over it and be careful how we use it. Yes, he's interested in our tithing, but not just our tithing. He's interested in what we do with the nine tenths, the money that's left over after we pay our tithing. We've been commanded to pay tithing, but we've also been heeded and give heed to what we do with the rest of our monies because we're good stewards. And if we're not good stewards, Brother Dan says we're going to be held accountable. And Brother Dan, again, I appreciate what you had to offer us this morning. Uh, everything that we do, we're supposed to bring honor and glory to our Heavenly Father and to our, His Son, Jesus Christ. So at this time, if the deacons would come forward, we would receive of your tithes and offerings. Would you bow with me, please? Our kind, gracious, and loving, and wonderful Heavenly Father, you are good, beyond good, to your children, especially those that have made a covenant with thee. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, for the blessings of life, those needful things that assist us from day to day, but especially those things, Heavenly Father, that we or take for granted just the air that we breathe and being able to just arise each and every day. So I pray thee, Heavenly Father, that each man, woman, and child here would be uh, attuned to thy spirit in all things, that we may be good stewards and help us, Heavenly Father, that our parents and grand grandparents to teach our children to always be good stewards over what they have been allowed to possess in their possession. Again, we thank thee, Heavenly Father, and we thank thee in the name of our, Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
O God above, hallowed be thy name. To thee be all praise, honor, and glory. For thou hast authored the plan of our salvation and even given thy Son, so that we too may have that blessed assurance. May the Spirit of God rest upon you. And in the stillness of this moment, you may know that he is upon your heart. He is aware of your every thought and has a desire for you to come unto him. In this spirit, as you depart this hallowed place, may his spirit go before you. May he guide you to the past that he would have you to go, and may you be willing to follow him. For he will grant you his strength and protection. That as you accomplish his will, you may receive all that you desire, for your Father knows the desires of your heart. And that as you grow in him, and as your unity develops amongst yourselves, he will ever increase your strength and your desire, for it is his desire that you become his. I pronounce this benediction in the blessed name of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.